Come now, in cooperation with the Momus Alexander Morgus Institute of Science, we take you downtown above the old city ice house for Morgus Presents. Look at that. Or, <laughs> look at it moving over to the eye. <laughs> I, <laughs> F, <laughs> yes, yes, gee, that's, oh, oh look, busy. <clears throat> well, uh, good evening, friends of science, those of the higher order, and especially you professors of apparitionology, <laughs> a little word I coined here, the study of ghosts. Yes, my friends, I'm in constant receipt of letters asking me to prove or disprove the existence of ghosts. Now, of course, uh, most scientists wouldn't touch this subject with a 10-foot tombstone. <laughs> However, they secretly write to me, Morgus, uh, under assumed names, challenging me to explore the subject. I got an example. In fact, I have a letter I got this week. It says, Dear Dr. Morgus, you seem to get by experimenting with the established uh, forces of nature. But what have you ever done with the supernatural? Have you lost your spirit? <laughs> Signed, Juan Valdez. Oh, come on now. You know Juan Valdez didn't write this letter, friends. The Juan Valdez I know grows bananas. Well, I'll tell you this much. That bug brain that wrote this letter is going to go bananas when he sees what's coming here tonight on your television screen. Uh, Give us just one moment to uh, scare up your notebook. So hurry up. We'll be right back. All right, that's enough. <laughs> okay, I think they've got the cameras on. All right, students. I want you to write down the definition of the word supernatural. Here it is. Supernatural. I want you to write this down in your notebooks. Existing outside the normal experience of life. That's what supernatural means. Outside the normal existence. <laughs> Are ghosts supernatural? <laughs> Wrong, professors. They are not outside the forces of nature. If ghosts can be seen, which they have, and if they can be heard, which they have, and if ghosts can move objects, which they have, <laughs> they are in our physical world. And if they exist in our physical world, then we can study them. <laughs> I think I may have blown Halloween for some of you out there. But now, the big question. Through what means can we study them? Well, it just so happens that someone here in our laboratory <laughs> is going to volunteer in this experiment. Some courageous individual is going to donate his body in order that we may get an insight into these apparitions. You see, my friends, in order to study ghosts, one must become a ghost. <laughs> now, to become a ghost, you must allow the spirit to leave your body. The heat must be released to allow the spirit to release. In other words, one must die. <laughs> now, I don't want to frighten you, but... Oh, wait a minute. This guy, Chopsley, he's afraid. He can't do this on television. Get out of there. You're making me look foolish. Get up, Chopsley. Out. Look busy. Uh, fix this thing up. Clean out the inside. Do something quickly. Uh, I don't want to frighten you, friends, but things are going to get a little spooky around here tonight. <laughs> As you can see, we have a casket ready for occupancy here. There's going to be a wake held right here on television. That's right. You're going to learn the answers to things you were too frightened to ask about in your lifetime. And of course, when you experiment with such matters, uh, no one, even I, can predict what surprises might <laughs> take place here. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> I have a little surprise for some of you parapsychologists out there. This little electronic marvel is the Morgusatronic Interdimensional Spectrum Receiver. <laughs> take a look. Oh, boy. For you laymen, it's appropriately called a ghost caller. <laughs> That's right, a ghost caller. I know that must shake you up. You see, my friends, part of the spirit world functions in a different dimension from our physical world. It happens to be the sixth dimension. And this device, 
penetrates that dimension and attracts them. I even have a way that will enable you to see into that dimension tonight. So stand by for the unexpected. <laughs> oh yes, expecting, yeah, the station has promised to uh, kind of scare up a little entertainment for us, so uh, let's let them roll it on down there and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Clean. <sighs> Any dust gets in there, it could interfere with the reception. Oh, there they are. Well, friends, <laughs> we're ready to turn on the Morgusatronic Interdimensional Spectrum Receiver. The ghost caller. <laughs> you saw that table go up a while ago. I know some of you think it's some kind of a cheap Paula trick. Well, you haven't seen anything, my friends. You're looking at electronics here in the highest order. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we're going to be turning it on. And when we do, it's sending out waves. And it's bringing in by reverse polarity. It's bringing in the six-dimensional world. The spiritual world is being attracted here, just like, well, it's almost like a bug light. <laughs> As a matter of fact, and we do have a little problem. Shops to be sure to keep all the windows closed. We do have a little problem with bugs coming in. But uh, in fact, I better turn it off. <laughs> Maybe my buggy landlady might come in here too if I'm not careful. But anyway, I want to show you how you are going to be able to see into the sixth dimension. You got it ready, Chopsley? Oh, okay. Very good. This is a a polariscope. Polariscope looks like an ordinary glass, but you know how when you go to the 3D movie, you can look behind a certain type of a glass and you see uh, three dimensions? <laughs> well, I'm going to be able to put this right over the lens of the camera, and then, then you'll be able to see the ghost world, you see. You couldn't see it with your naked eye. You need a special polariscope. As a matter of fact, I'm going to... Oh, somebody's at the door. <laughs> Always interruptions at the wrong time. Yes, what is it? Come on in, folks. This is it. This is what? The laboratory of the famous Dr. Momus Alexander Margus. Can you believe that what this is? actually exists on top of the old city ice house, huh? Hmm. You what know, is? this man is actually self-sustaining. No grants, no aid, nothing like that. Just a few anonymous donations. Who are you people? Who are you people? He has an assistant, I mean an assistant, that goes out at night and collects a few things behind institutions and hospitals and all. What is this, a tour of some sort? Let me show you this. This is something special. Half, whatever it is, but it's a skull and brain left over from his former assistant hooked into a supercomputer, and it has calculations beyond comprehension. Listen, Nothing in modern what's science. What's going on here? Look, you're interrupting an experiment here, fella. Yeah. I've got to know who you people are. Hey, come on over here. Look at these things. Automatic cameras, they come on and they actually show his experiments. This guy has quite a following. That's right. That's incredible, right. Incredible, incredible. And you're interrupting something, oh, right? Something over here. Look at this. A what secret is? room. We're not supposed to go in there. You need some kind of special equipment or something. Rumor has it that there are patients of his that are still maybe recuperating or something back there. You're not even supposed to peep in there unless you, oh, I don't know what it takes, but you, you don't want to mess with that. Look, I'll show you something really special, which you came to see across the hall over there is workshop where he actually builds his experiments. Come on, I'll show you right over this way. No, no, no. Nobody gets out of here till I find out what this is all about, my friend. Nobody. <laughs> this door stays closed, my friends. <laughs> what is this? Good heavens, there were ghosts, you could see them, that's called spontaneous manifestation, that's when you can see them but, but they're really not there, Chopsley, oh, oh, the interdimensional receiver did this Chopsley, you see we turned it on just for a little while, but that was enough to bring them in, they must have been nearby, that's why they looked in a solid state, oh, you got the glass, oh boy, now, now you're really going to see something. This is no ordinary piece of glass, my friends. It's a spectral, polariscopic piece of lens. Just like those 3D glasses you wear when you go to the movies to see another dimension. Wait till you see what this brings in. I'm going to put it right on top of the camera lens up there. Okay, right there. Okay, now, Chopsley, oh, give me that thing. Don't look through there. You can't see anything. Now, I'm going to see the same thing you see. As a matter of fact, uh, we're going to turn this on right now. Okay. All right, my friends. Now, I want you to pay very close attention. We're going to be bringing them in. You look around, Chopsley. Oh, I'm going to find something right away. Oh, I already see something. 
well, <laughs> or whatever it was, it faded out. Oh, eh, I know we'll find something. I know this will work. <laughs> I just know it will work. Uh, just, just keep looking with me, Chops. No, you can't see anything. Wait a minute. Oh, 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 I see something. I see something. Oh, oh, yes. Can you see that? Can you see what I see? Oh, 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 we've got it. The fluoroscopic lenses are working. Live on television for the first time, you have to admit, nothing like this has ever been shown on television. And of course, oh, this is just the beginning. Stay tuned for more from Orgus the Magnificent. Chopsley. Oh, there they are. <laughs> I've been waiting for you. Remember I told you earlier somebody in this laboratory was going to die? <laughs> well, it's not going to be you, Chopsley. It's going to be me. <laughs> That's right, friends. I hope you have your VCRs rolling. Thanks to the wonders of chemistry, not only am I going to die, but I'm going to be able to come back to life. You see, I'm going to be declared clinically dead, but I won't be medically dead, if you know what I mean. I happen to have a friend of mine by the name of Dr. Rufus Bottomley. You haven't met him, but you will later tonight. He and I have a pact together that if one or the other dies, the other will come and sign the death certificate. <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell him what I'm doing because I don't want him to know about my experiment. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have to disguise my voice so uh, he won't recognize me. I'm going to pretend to be one of my neighbors or somebody like that. Get him over here. And once he's here and signs a death certificate... Hello! Hello! Uh, is this Dr. Bottomley? Uh, this is uh, an old friend of uh, Dr. Morgus, your friend. Oh, I've got some bad news, Doctor. Uh, your friend, Dr. Morgus, uh, just passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. No, it's true. Yeah. Oh, he was a brilliant fellow, wasn't he? Well, he, he, he said just before he died, he says, please call Bottomley and have him come over and, and sign the death certificate and take care of the arrangements you agreed on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, oh we'll be waiting for you. Oh, poor fellow. <laughs> well, I hate to do that. Uh, let's get the injection ready, Chopsley. Quickly, we're going to... Uh, now, I'm going to quickly remind you that I have a little chemical here that's <laughs> going to do it all. Now, Chopsley, you know how this works. This chemistry right here is what it's all about. This is called freon chloris eptaphamaldehydrine. <laughs> a little chemical of molecular preservation, my friends. It'll preserve the body for about one hour. Now, Chopsley, you know how to do this. You just put the little needle in there, push the air out like that, and let's just bring it in. All right. Just get about four or five cc's in there, and let's shoot it right where I told you, right there in the neck, all right? And I'll hold it. Right. You feel the gland? All right, go ahead, push it. Oh, okay, go ahead, shoot. There you got it. Okay, okay, that's right. All right, good, good, that's very good. Now, here's what you to do. This is gonna, in about three or four minutes, I'm gonna just go out like that, okay? Just about when they're ready to close the casket, after the ceremonies and the press takes pictures and all of that, when they're just about ready to close the casket, you stop everything and you give me the injection with the blue solution in this side of the neck, okay? And then I'll be able to pop up and surprise the whole nation. <laughs> All right, let's, let's put this out of the way so you can't mess up. All right, this will be right here. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I forgot to speak into the press. I forgot to call Wiley. Uh, I got to call my, uh, my agent, my business manager. Oh, gosh, I forgot about that. Uh, oh, it's oh, starting to take effect. Uh, oh. Yes, uh, oh. hello, Wiley. Uh, look, uh, uh, there's an emergency. You've got to get over here right away. I don't have time to explain too much. But listen, Wiley, uh, uh, Dr. Bottomley is coming over here to sign my death certificate. I, I, I know, I know. But you see, uh, no, I'm going to die right now. Uh, well, look, I, 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 I can't explain very... I can't... I, I, uh, hurry, Chopsley. Chops. Get me in there right away. Get me in there. Pull me, Chops. Hurry, hurry. Help me. Uh, hurry, I'm not gonna... Uh, oh, wait there, friends. Everything will be okay. You'll see. I'll come right out of my body once I... once I fade away. Oh, I'm, I'm already feeling lighter. I feel like I'm floating on air. Oh, my body is rising. Good heavens. What a funny feeling. What a, Oh, there I am. I, 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 
I can't believe it. I'm an ectoplasm. I'm a real spirit, folks. You've seen it live on television. This is, this is truly amazing. I'm an ectoplasm, a pure ectoplasm. Look, look, go ahead. You, you down at the station. Roll it on back. But the rest of you don't leave. In about 10 minutes, you're going to see something you never believed possible. Nobody's going to believe this. <laughs> oh, there you are. I've been waiting for you. Oh, I know this is hard to believe. Me as a ghost, but it's true. Thanks to this special audio-visual lens I put on the cameras, you see, you can actually see me and hear me. Of course, uh, Chopley and Eric can't. <laughs> but I tell you, it feels wonderful. I'm floating around, and you feel no pain, no hunger pains. Uh, by the way, my agent, Wiley Fay, is coming up here. He's going to handle the funeral arrangements. Uh, oh, there he is. Oh, he's going to be sad. Well, take a look at the body, Wiley. <laughs> uh, he doesn't understand all of this. Oh, Chops. Chops, how could this possibly happen? It must have been some sort of experiment that, that went wrong, huh? What would he want us to do? I know. The press? I know. I, I, I'll call the press. I think he would have wanted it that way. Oh, no, look at this. Mrs. Fetish. Oh. Why were you knocking on my door? What did you get me up here for? It's a dark, dark day. What are you talking about? Your tenant, Dr. Morgus. What's he doing in there? Uh, I'm afraid he, he's gone to his reward. He's among the angels now. He died. He died? Oh, no. He's not dead. This is just a low-down scheming trick to jip me out of my rent money. That's what it is. No, 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 no. I'm afraid he's dead. His friend, Dr. Bottomley, is coming to sign the death certificate. Oh! He is dead! Oh! Oh, this is horrible. Who am I ever going to collect my rent money? Well, oh. as a matter of fact, he, he, he let me take care of his private papers, and I thought there was an envelope with, with your name on it, like a will. A will? Yes. Oh, you know, come to think of it, he was a very kind, sweet man. When you got to know him, he could be very charming. Follow me. Must be around here somewhere. Oh. Here it is. Uh, last will and testament. I, Dr. Momus A. Margus, being of sound mind, spent all of my money and leave nothing to my landlady, Alma Fetish. Oh, why that low, down, rotten, conniving cheapskate? Knowing Mrs. Fetish, she will no doubt immediately turn my laboratory into a paid admittance museum and collect more than I ever owed her. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this madhouse into a museum. I'm going to have tickets printed right now. No, 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 no. Look, look, you don't understand. Look, I'm going to get the press up here. Huh? We need people for the service. Think of the publicity and think of the money, huh? Yes, the money. So let's uh, turn on the crocodile tears. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Oh, oh. oh, there's Dr. Bottomley now. Oh, what a terrible loss to the medical science. Yes, he was such a wonderful mind. I, I brought some of my medical students with me to assist and to pay homage to this genius of a man. Let's see here now. Oh, yes, yes, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, yes. He, he's gone. Uh, I understand you brought the uh, death certificate. Oh, yes, I did. Uh, why don't you fill that out and I'm going to uh, call the press. All right. <laughs> oh, oh, he's writing out my death certificate. We're going to have the press here. And of course, when the press gets here, Chops is going to give me the shot to revive me. And I'm going to rise from the dead on television. Stay tuned for more from Morgus. Oh, this is too good to be true. Oh, this is... Oh, oh I've been waiting for you. The big moment is here. Wiley has the national press here, and they're going to see me rise up out of the casket when Chopster gives me that shot in the neck. <laughs> and of course, oh, Alma Fetish is over there faking it as usual. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Fetish, cool it, huh? Sit down, would you? Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the press, folks, I've taken the opportunity to write a little eulogy here that I would like to read on behalf of Dr. Morgus. Aristotle, Einstein, Newton, 
and Morgus, the scientific pantheon. Here lies a man who was truly ahead of his time. Cities will be named after him. He was a man so dedicated that he left his body to continue his life's work. Why, even in death, he is contributing to humanity. Because, according to Dr. Bottomley, Dr. Morgus has donated his body and all of his major organs to scientific study. Wait a minute. I made, I made a deal with Bottomley. Look. Isn't that right, Dr. Bottomley? Absolutely. We are going to take those wonderful organs and dissect every single one of them and discover the essence of his genius. Oh, no. No, no. I, I better get inside the casket. I... Now, before we close the casket, let us close our eyes and bow our heads for a moment of silence. Uh oh, oh, I better hurry. <laughs> Get ready, Chelsea. Okay, buddy, here I come. Take me. All right, Chelsea, you know what to do. <laughs> That's my boy, Chelsea. Just a matter of seconds now, friends. <laughs> What's taking you so long, Chelsea? Chelsea, Chelsea, get on with it. Hey. Doctor, he's all yours. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm being left behind. Bottomly. Bottomly. You you can't go away with my body. Come back here, the deal's off, bottomly. This is ridiculous. I can't let that fool take my body. Chopsley. You can't, you can't stand there and do nothing. Help me. Oh, no, they're going to chop up my body. Wiley, why? Oh, he can't hear me. Tune in again next week at the same time when Morgus the Magnificent takes us into the realm of science.